I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mrs. America, episode eight, entitled Houston. But I think it should be called Alice because, man, did she go into some wonderland. Uh, I am joined, of course, by my amazing co-panelist, Mr. Cody Epperson, a sister to the sisters. How are you, sir? I am doing very well. How about yourself? <laughs> I am awesome. And of course, she always brings amazing insight, Miss Ashman Ram. Hello, Ashman. Hi, guys. How are you? Wow, this was uh, this was definitely a different episode, guys. Uh, just overall thoughts. Start us off, Ashman. You know, this was such a different episode, but in the weirdest way, I want to say it was my favorite episode, mm. like throughout the entire series. And I think the reason for that is the whole time we see like two sets of women fighting on different issues. And this is the first time we actually see them come together and experience each other's world, especially for Alice. Like I totally agree. This, uh, the name of this episode should have been Alice because we see her in so many different lights, but I think this convention really transformed her. So I really enjoyed um, seeing the togetherness rather than the separation. Love it, love it. Cody, what about you? Um, I'm kind of on the same page. It was really nice to see Alice go through this whole thing, her little journey. I loved that moment where she, um, I can't, I, anyway, we'll get to it, but I was just so, it was so nice to see her evolution to this point and then watch how it left her because she was, you can tell throughout the series, she's had so many thoughts and ideas, but she's been like bred to just be like, mm, well, I'll just listen to what anyone else has to say. And she's finally she finally like felt like awakened and it was just so funny the way it all started and i was i i was saying before we uh, started filming that i this episode i was like okay here we go and then all of a sudden i caught myself i was like what wait what's happening right now and i was like very here for the journey so i i was intrigued and loved it awesome yes it was definitely a, a journey i mean literally and figuratively so <laughs> Let's just get into it. So we have Alice and Pamela who are gonna to go to this convention and they can't fly, which we find out later why, but initially, so they're gonna drive down to Houston. So this is not a quick trip. This isn't two hours. This is probably about, a, I'd say 20 to 30 hour drive, I would think from where they were coming from. Um, but Illinois to Texas. Yeah, I mean, that's, right? yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, <not right. laughs> that's, that's not a quick trip. Um, so we, we quickly see that we now have the two non-leaders trying to lead here, right? Uh, or I should say at least one non-leader. Uh, I don't think Pamela is really ever considered a leader, but Alice in her own regard has been somewhat of a leader in the past. And here we are, she's you know got her mom packing everything up and, and we really see the difference in these two women's lives where super supported, and then literally kind of falling out of the car to get on this journey, right? Uh, so talk a little bit about that, Cody, that whole, that beginning scene where we're introduced to this journey. Um, it was it was definitely interesting to watch Alice's family, like, be, oh, did you do this? Did you do that? And she's like, yes, I've packed a bag before. And it was very, <laughs> um, it was very telling of something we already know of, just like how Alice believes what it, what it means to be a woman in, and it was very cute to see like her mother was the same way she's like oh and she speaks for a daughter like oh you need to help with thanksgiving and do this and, like that's not a question that is what you need to do while i'm gone and then um pamela shows up and her kid follows her out of the car she's like no get back in the car and poor pamela we've we're, we just get glimpses of that she we haven't there's no focus on her just yet but we get glimpses of that her life is a little rough and um it was very interesting to see and then their drive there was adorable in its own right but then they get lost and it, it was just it was just it was very perfect for who they are and mm. i do think that they grew from it and then the freaking irony of we're lost and they follow the 
the opposing opposition of the opposing opposition what an oxymoron they follow these women who oppose their beliefs and views into where they're trying to go because they're having a, par or a not parade but a procession it was yeah. a, it was really great nice so yeah aspen uh, cody touched on it how they uh they have to essentially follow the enemy into the war uh <laughs> talk about talk about that I mean, I thought it was really cute. I mean, that entire scene, right? It's like they're actually coming into their own, own taking a road trip like this. You kind of see it um, when they're trying to read the map. They're both, do we do this? We end up seeing, um, we end up seeing Alice in her rollers by the end. It's like they're trying to maneuver all these things about how am I going to present myself at this convention and be the woman that I know to be and represent myself? But at the same time, like Alice is the driver, Pamela is the co-pilot, and they're all on this long journey. And uh, Lowen came through because if it wasn't for them, they would have been so lost that I don't think they would have made it to the convention. So. You know, Pamela was like, well, let's just jump on board and follow them. So I think their entire journey almost began with um, getting introduced to the other side. And mm. the further they got down the road, they, they really see it's not that bad. So I thought, I thought it was a great intro um, for those two coming together and coming into their own independence. Nice. Uh, just a heads up, Ashton, we're having a little bit of issue with your connection. I don't know if there's oh. anything you can do to help that. Uh, not a big deal, but just just so you're aware. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think this was a great way to uh, introduce this kind of, this buddy road trip almost. Um, and and like you said, that we, you kind of see that the enemy isn't necessarily the enemy. It's just a different view. Um, and because up until now, like, like, uh, uh, you were saying in the beginning, it's it's been like the two factions, right? And so they've been kind of forced to come together. Uh, and as we go down this episode, I, I really like the way that that progresses. Uh, all right, so moving on, um, they can't, of course, the hotel's overbooked by about 400. So they, casual. <laughs> yeah, real, no, no big deal. Um, so of course, now they have to be put into a room with people they don't know. And even better, people that they don't necessarily agree with. So this was very interesting, uh, a kind of a challenge for Alice, really, because you know she's so used to everything being set up perfectly in her little world. And here you go, you got to go, and you know, fly by the seat of your pants. And and Rosemary, man, she has no love. Well, you should have got here earlier, man. It's it's Rosemary. tough. It's yeah. tough love. Cody, uh, talk a little bit about that whole kind of checking in scene. <laughs> Um, it, again, it just spoke so much to who Alice is. And she's like, oh, it's like at first she's like, I'm going to take a stand and do something. And then she's like, oh, well, I think my husband can sort this out. And I loved it because she's like, oh, well, if you want to call him, the payphone is over there. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're busy, Alice. But um, <laughs> it, it just, I, at the same time, though, I just have, I, I felt so bad for them because they're just really going through it. And they're just so ill prepared and I I guess not trained to go through something like this for like for example Alice says we'll call my husband and that's kind of her go-to and we see in the like the next scene she's like oh we'll call Philip it's just like um it was tough and then what's her bucket what was her name the Rosemary um, Rose thank you she was so cold yeah. and I was like come on like you're not even gonna like support your sister you guys have been working together one, you're friends, and two, you've been on this like journey doing this whole thing with ERA or anti-ERA for at least a few years now, and the, and you're just like, oh, well, you should have gotten here sooner. It's like, why are you, like, what? Where do your loyalties lie? Like, why are you, it, it was frustrating. I was frustrated for them and then frustrated, I guess, at Rosemary, not so much yeah. the other two girls, but uh yeah no I, I i'm with you 100 it was just like wow just okay no no heads up no like hey you know you might want to try to call ahead or nothing it's just like oh, figure it out well they don't have cell phones back then so well, that's you true. know i guess isn't that's that true. so i, I guess, guess you kind of show up for a surprise but right 
Even uh, you, just no sympathy, no yeah. empathy. Just like, oh well. Um, okay. Yeah. So they go into the go into the they bathroom, go in the bathroom. And then of course the whole world is in the bathroom because everybody's in the same situation. And they finally get into a stall. Ashman, talk about this interesting scene because we like we finally get a look at uh, all these things we've been thinking about Pamela. We finally get a little bit of an answer. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that entire scene was so telling for both of the women, right? Like from the time of introduction, they see that, okay, what they're used to planning everything, it doesn't just work all the time. Like life mm. isn't, if you follow these set of rules, then your room will be, be there when you get there, right? So it's like, and then from their own friend, um, Rosemary, we see how cold she was also. So now they're left, but nothing to go into like the bathroom and say, okay, let me at least get myself together. I mean, she still has the rollers in her hair, right? And in the ladies room, I mean, that's kind of how it normally is. When girls go into the ladies room, you're either freshening <laughs> up and, you know, you have a bunch of people and you just find your little spot and you're respectful to everybody there. In this case, they're so used to being like confined and in their own world that, you know, like Alice was really uncomfortable. Whereas Pamela, she was kind of cute. She just starts undressing and, you I know, or she that. attempts to, <laughs> she attempts to um, undress and Alice just starts, you know, she kind of becomes a Phyllis and becomes a very mm. controlling, like, oh my God, what are you doing? Almost like we can't join them. Like the public shame, women like us don't act like this. Whereas Pamela's like, well, that's what everybody else is doing. <laughs> so, you know, she kind of stuffs them into the stall together. And they have that back and forth moment where we find out that um, Pamela's husband doesn't even know that she is at this convention. And I felt so sorry for her as a woman. Like, I know we haven't got the factual evidence that like she's being abused in her marriage mm. or she's, you know, incredibly unhappy, but obviously she's very, very frightened and, um, and she escaped to be here. So, um, you know, Alice in that time when she's just kind of like, well, you have to call him, you have to tell him, I thought she was out of pocket. Cause I'm like, listen, you know, you might think you're standing up for sisterhood, but you're not doing that. Like this woman is petrified and there's a reason why she kind of escaped to be here. So I thought that was good that we got that. Um, is in a really unhealthy relationship but it also showed that what it really meant if they had to come together. And, and I thought it was funny when somebody kept knocking on the door and they're like, it's occupied, it's occupied. And, and you have the liberal ladies checking up on each other. They're like, okay, we just wanna make sure you're okay in there. And, uh, and they weren't used to that because they're kind of used to a different level of privacy. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, that was, and it, it obviously it speaks as well also to just the character of the, the libbers that you know, they're just it is here that there's a woman in trouble. They're not, you know, right. concerned about what your political views are <laughs> at this moment. Um, so they get they get forced to then, of course, literally bunk with a liber, and not just a liber, but also a minority liber, which was very interesting because it seemed like Pamela was like, okay, this is it is what it is. Like this is better to be with my kids right now, so I'm, I'm oh, yeah. good. But obviously. Alice, you know, she had to take a kind of second to kind of ease herself into this. Um, and I just thought it was, uh, it was, it was well done because I think it was true to who Alice is, especially in that moment. Uh, obviously, I think that there's some growth in this episode, but, but Cody, just talk about that, you know, that introduction to the crowded room. <laughs> Yeah, what what's what's funny? Maybe it's because I come from like a, a background with hospitality. Is that it's a little? It was shocking to me that like th this conference is a lot of there is opposing op. There uh, keep saying opposing oppositions. Is that a real term or am I just being an an oxymoron? There <laughs> there are people there who have such differing ideal ideologies, and they they i just feel like if they're like oh we're going to go sign up for this room share thing that they would have like at least thought to like oh let's not put people who are going to kill each other in the same room right not to like not that it's not a good idea to put them together but i just it just seemed like the second i i saw that i was like oh like this can't end well like which i, I mean it didn't end badly which was good but 
I was just surprised at that. And then, I mean, again, we went on a whole journey with Alice and this was a solid beginning to it to see her discomfort. Um, and, but then again, she's also, she's a, she is a polite woman. So she didn't make, she was apprehensive at first, but she didn't make a fuss. So you can, I have to respect her for that. Yeah. Yeah, no, she definitely didn't. You're right. She didn't make a big thing. She just kind of rolled with it. But it just it just took her a little longer than Pamela. Um, it was so funny, though, that Pamela was like, all right, nice to meet you, and just ran <laughs> in. Right. Um, so, you know, uh, Alice doesn't have her best night's sleep. Of course, Pamela's like, man, I haven't slept that good in six years <laughs> on these, like, on these horrible beds. Um, and then we get, so we get, she, you know, they finally get themselves together. It's the next morning. They go to their like kind of home base, and there's Rosemary running the show like a boss. Um, and you know she's not really, not really feeling Alice at all. Ashman, talk about this scene where we, you know Alice kind of gets shuts down a little. Yeah, I mean, Rosemary, in my opinion, she isn't kind, right? She hasn't been mm. kind at all, and it's like all these ladies are supposed to be in this group together, fighting for the same thing. And they're not even being nice to each other, right? Mm. So it's like, how how much are they really unified? And I think we, Alice keeps getting a taste of this medicine. Like every part of this episode, she walks in the room, she's happy to see everyone, she's excited. And like, she learns that Rosemary gave her speech to, I believe, Anna. And I was really happy that Alice uh, stood up for herself. Like Mm. she could have been passive as we saw in other episodes. She just kind of backs down and, but she really stood up for herself and was like, excuse me, like Phyllis appointed me to do this and I want to do this. And I was proud of her for building up the confidence, um, speaking out and just uh, taking her place in this convention because she actually feels like she does belong there. And I thought the scene between the women was just hilarious. Anna's like, oh, Anna's the better, or sorry, Rosemary's like, Anna's the better speaker. We're going to give it to her. And uh, Alice took it to the next level. She's like, I'm calling Phyllis. (laughs) (laughs) And that was the game changer off the bat. Like, she's like, okay, fine. If you're going to go there, like she tried to like ravel with her a little bit and was like, oh, we can't, you know, call um, Phyllis for every single problem. But when she saw that Alice was serious, she's like, okay, you're going to be the speaker. So I'm glad she got her part, but it doesn't change the fact that down every chance she got to break her confidence. I don't think it was intentional, but I think she's just that type of person. Yeah, so about think, her being in charge, and this is the way that she thought things should be ran. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely uh, learned some things from Phyllis. Uh, she's like mini Phyllis or Phyllis in training. Uh, although she doesn't quite have the joie de vie that Phyllis has. I don't think anyway. Um, Awesome. So because, sorry, so Alice has a little victory, right? So she's going to do the speech. And she's been practicing on the way down, we saw. And then we put her in front of a camera and she starts so strong. But then, of course, very quickly falls apart. Cody, because you've been been very sympathetic to... uh, to Alice's whole episode. So how were you feeling in that moment? It was painful because Alice, she literally has this moment where she's she's talking and she has her little speech memorized and she like looks at the camera and like <laughs> not at the interviewer, but at the camera, she kind of has this little like, oh, like this is so fun. And just m- mere moments afterwards, the reporter's like, oh, where are you getting your facts? And she's like, uh... <laughs> and that was it and it was just like and it just because it, it just you were like even though I was not, I'm not on their side of this whole decision with the RA but it was like I was so proud of her for like in the previous scene she's so like she comes through and she stands up for herself and then in this moment it just like takes away all that momentum she had gathered and it was um I just felt I was sad and um but also, I kind of agree, like, if that's how she is with the camera, then maybe she shouldn't be the one giving the speech. So. Yeah. No, I think, you know, I, I think baby steps, and I, I, I think she's not quite where she wants to be. And I also think, you know, it's a testament to, you know, how good Phyllis is, 
you know, it's one thing to watch someone and be like, oh, I think I could do that. And then you quickly see that you got to be on your toes. So, uh, Ashvin, what were your thoughts on that scene? I mean, I, I agree with Cody on that part that I think she almost got camera stuck, uh, like starstruck, right? But with mm. the camera, because she's like, oh, this feels really nice. And she's engaging in it. And I think she had a blur moment. Like, I don't think she has enough experience in front of the camera. Mm. And, yeah. uh, and we know Media like, training. people <laughs> being in front of the Exactly, exactly. And we know like that training comes with you have to be on your toes and you know you just you you, you got to be able to voice what blurred at that time any of her thoughts what i felt bad about is in exception to pamela none of the other women built her up like i get that everybody wants to win but they could have been like oh good job uh, it's okay. Next time, like something like that. But if it had for her, but I'm glad Pamela was there for her. And she's like, oh, it wasn't that bad. But we, we really do see that uh, Alice did take it personal. Uh, sure. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, so sorry, guys. We're having a little bit of bad connection with Ashman. She's going to see if she can come back. Uh, so we apologize for that. Um, but no big deal. She'll she'll be right back. Um, so so yeah. So I mean, so what she I think she what she was saying is you know not having the support from this group of women that's supposed to be all about support and you know that's that's not great you know uh so anyway let's uh move on down the line so we have our girl alice she's not you know not feeling great about herself so she goes i'm just going to go to the bar and grab a drink and then she meets this woman who appears initially to be someone that she should be talking to. And then of course, and it's funny, I knew it. I was like, nah, this is going too well. This is, there's no way she is not for the other side. Cody, what were your thoughts during that scene? Um, similar, it's very similar to yours. Like I was, it just seemed like, oh, she met her perfect little match at the bar because she's <laughs> right. having a down day. They're both by themselves. They're both wear cardigans and are very <laughs> clean cut and, and like doilies. But um, not that maybe that was not a nice thing to say, but uh, did, they were just very similar. And um, what, what, when it stood out to me was when she was like, oh, my, my friend from church, she was the, like, that's when I was like, oh. And then um, Alice was like, oh, that's my friend Phyllis. Da, 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 da. Mm. And uh, literally for a moment, I was like, is Alice a lesbian? Is this like a, a like huge character twist that's yeah, about to oh. come out? Like, I'm here for it. Oh, but, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. You were saying when she said her friend from church, you were assuming that there was a lesbian thing there? I thought the lady who, the, the stranger. Right. When I thought when she was mentioning, oh, her friend from church, right. I was, I thought, I was like, oh my gosh, is there maybe like a lesbian thing going on here? And then Alice went off about Phyllis and I was like, is Alice oh. like low key into Phyllis and just doesn't realize it? So wow. I went to the whole okay. like homosexual thing, but maybe that's just me and my overactive gay dart. <laughs> but <laughs> but then um, it was just what was so funny, and it, and it almost a little bit into the alcoholism, like oh, like my husband says, have a drink and it'll smooth things over, and uh, the whole thing with the Christian pill. That she goes like, oh, well, that doesn't help. Take it. I just take a Christian pill. And I was, or they, they pray together first, which is nice. And then she takes the pill. But I was like, oh my goodness. Like what, she just took a pill from a stranger. Like, right. what is that? And granted, I don't think they were, I don't think it was like ecstasy no. or something insane. It was, it was probably like a Valium or a Vicodin. Right. Maybe, maybe, honestly, it could have as easily been an 800 milligram ibuprofen. But like, 
I just think Alice is such a little, she's just, just not something she does is have yeah. more than a couple cocktails and then also have some sort of pharmaceutical in her system. And that's where it launched off. Yeah. Hey, Ashman. <laughs> hey, Ashman, welcome back. Hi, guys. Thank you. Sorry about that. Not sure what happened. No, no worries. This, this, this Zoom world is crazy and it's technological. When it works, it's amazing. And when it doesn't, it's like everything else. So, you know, all good, all good. So as you, could, you, as you heard, we were talking about uh, Alice's uh, new bar friend that we were both pretty speculative about. You know, the further the conversation went, we were both like, I don't think she's on the same team, but we'll see. Uh, what well, were your thoughts in that scene? Really quick though, sorry, not to, oh, sorry. I know you just came back. I just had a question. What, I, and maybe I should have done some research on my end, but what did she say? She said she was a part of something. She, um, the the new friend of the bar is like, oh, I'm a part of this. And that's when Alice was like, what? What was uh, it that she was a part of? I believe it was now, right? Now, what is, am I missing something? What's now? Or am I being really bad and not noting a huge part of the show? <laughs> Uh, I just assumed it was something for, for, for the ERA. I don't, I'm not specifically oh, sure. Oh, okay. It was just like, you know, some, some version of what the other team is what I was getting. Uh, maybe Ashwin has some insight. What, were, what are your thoughts on that? Ashwin? I mean, like, I don't know what the abbreviation is, but clearly it was something from the other side because as soon That's as, uh, as soon as um, Alice heard it, she's like, you could have told me you were from now. So Obviously, she knew that, oh, this is representing like a whole nother side of this um, argument. But yeah, so I think I think that was the basic behind that one because uh, she identified it so quickly. But even on that, it just goes to show like, again, Alice, she completely connected with her in the beginning. So she keeps connecting with these different people throughout this journey that are on the other side. But she's getting along with them very, very well, like, right, like, Put the, put the issue aside, she's actually connecting with these people. And as soon as she finds out um, they're on the other side, she pulls herself away because that's kind of what she's built her mind to believe. But mm. it is beginning to digest in her. And we see that when she begins to take her walk through the halls. I mean, you know, she starts embracing all the different things that she's seeing. I mean, she goes into rooms that she would have never went into before She's treated with, you know, grace and kindness. She's actually able to eat some of their food. Uh, I love the part when she was screaming with all the other ladies. I think it was called the breakthrough room. And, you know, she's just letting herself go. Whereas, again, when she went into Rosemary's room, she was so hungry. And Rosemary's mm. like, oh, you're eating from the garbage pile. Like, what the hell? That's just leftover, right? And so I think Rosemary, um, Alice just kept on getting more and more ticked off as she sees the difference amongst just women itself. And, um, and so her journey was just amazing. Every room she went into, she had some level of fun. And I loved when she went into like the lesbian room and just starts singing her heart out, right? She just like, she just takes over and I just thought it was so cute that she was able to let herself kind of free and unglue and feel what it was like to not be judged where she's constantly being judged by, by the women that she hangs mm. with. That's a great, that's a great point. Yeah. I mean, no one looked twice at her. No one, you know, it was just very like, okay, come on in. Right. Um, uh, yeah. There was a lot of, a lot of funny moments in this. Uh, this is a good thing for all you kids out there. Don't do drugs because uh, our girl was our girl was tripping. Uh, I love the I love the when she was, you know, uh, she's in front of the nun who's essentially being a priest in a funny way, and she's like, "I'm really very hungry." Well, they're they're still serving food at the gay lounge, um, and, then, and so I just love that like her her hunger took over her moral character, right? Mm -hmm. Like end of the day, when you're hungry. A lot of your issues go out the window. And and then she gets this plate of food and literally lays down <laughs> trying to eat it and says to the, I uh, was in DC Dash, I believe, playing the, the role. I don't know what her character's name her is. Her character's name. Yeah. Uh, and she said, I, I discovered a better way to eat. <laughs> so good. 
And then, like you were saying, uh, Ashman, she, you know, she just starts singing this song that everybody knows. And then, of course, Nisi points out to her, you're building a song written by a Marxist. <laughs> Cody, talk about that whole that whole scene with the plate. And it just I had I thought it was hilarious. It was great. And I loved it. I loved every moment of it because she just like it's like it's exactly what Ashman said. It was just like she was so unglued and it didn't matter. And everyone accepted her with open arms and she was so free spirited and she wasn't going into the rooms and saying nasty things. And it was just really nice to see that and to have that interaction with someone who we haven't seen in a few episodes was so I just, it was one of those, it was such a, I felt it was just such a sweet moment when she's explaining like, that's a Marxist song. She's like, no, like, what do you mean? And um, I just, I really liked it. And then, and of all the rooms, like they, I think of any room she would have issue, the lesbian room. And that's the room she went to and she got food and she was singing a song and she took center stage and just had the time of her life. And then afterwards we see that she, they're talking about her poster and she literally looks at them and she goes, mm. I'm sorry. And they don't realize that it's her poster, but they, she tells them she's sorry. And I, I just, I really think she learned so much from this journey. Yeah, no, she definitely, I don't mean, know. Uh, with she, I think the drugs helped out, you know, just maybe opened her up a little, but I think that, I think it sunk in. Um, and I think the longer she went on this journey, the more she really started questioning, like, what are we doing here? Um, yeah. The like uh, juxtaposition I, between like how Rosemary was treating her and then how mm. these strangers were treating her is, it was very eye opening for her. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> uh, it's all right. No, it's great. Uh, so we have this, we have this great kind of slow-mo walk down the hall um, from, uh, oh God, her Gloria. name. Thank you, from Gloria Steinem. Oh my gosh, I was yeah. freaking out. And you know, of course, it's played by Rose Byrne, who's just beautiful. Like the whole thing is just, and it was just like, it was like something out of high school, like a high school, like locker room, or, you know, like <laughs> lo locker hallway, you know, just this amazing person walking by. And I love, I love Pamela's, what she says, oh, she smells so good. Um, so they have to go, of course, she's going into the room where they are bunking with the, mm -hmm. the libras, right? So now they kind of, she kind of gets this, it's this funny thing. She gets this behind the scenes look at Gloria and, and this movement, like, you know, this is something they couldn't have paid for and here it is for free. Um, so talk about that, Ashman, like this whole, this whole, her whole behind the scenes look at this, the movement. Totally. No, I love that. I mean, first of all, they were starstruck by Gloria, right? And then for her to be in the same room that they were going into um, was so great because it's like even, you know, you could see with like the liberal side, they're not afraid to speak whatever they need to speak about, right? They still invited the other women into the room and they're like, oh, you know, go, go ahead, come on in. We're still having a discussion. So it's like they invited them into the conversation and that part when Alice is looking at Gloria and she's just staring at her and Gloria notices her pin and sees that, oh, she's on the opposition side, but still treats her with, just as a person. She's like great color on you. Mm. So you can see that Alice is just being drawn to her because I feel like from every part of this journey, every room that she's went into, everything that she thought about these people were in her head. In her experience, none of it has been true. She's been treated differently by every single person and now being in the room she's watching them in their circle i think she loves the way they're everyone's included everyone's voice matters and we even hear her giggle i mean she was kind of a part of the meeting just not in the circle right so i think that i think that she is learning a lot about herself and i love the question when she goes back into the convention room when she asked, she's like, who is attacking us? Mm. I feel like that was the biggest question this entire time because all these women build, are built up to believe that the other women are bad, but that's like the furthest from the truth. So um, I, thought, I thought she had a great interaction with them. And I think her heart is seriously uh, changing and for, on some level has changed. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's, so, the, so we get that, we get to the floor uh, the sexual preference resolution passes. And of course, most of the women there are for this thing. So, 
it erupts, you know, it's emotional. It's this uh, amazing moment. And then we really see Alice taking all this in. Uh, back to what you were saying, uh, Ashwin, when she says, I came here to defend myself, but I have to ask who's attacking us. And she's literally uh, being surrounded by these women who are attacking them. And there's, there's no, there's no one's attacking them. Right. Um, so she has this great kind of moment. And then, you know, they all stand up and start plot. And then she joins in with that and looks to Pamela and has this beautiful moment that is like the opposite from the bathroom stall. Cody, talk about that beautiful moment. Um, I got a little misty. <laughs> I'm yeah, not gonna lie. Totally. Because like, I mean, like we've, I mean, the whole episode is about um, Alice's journey and I, Pamela, even though she's on the, not on my team for this whole thing, I hold a soft spot. There's a spot in my heart for Pamela and for Alice to turn around, like, I'm here for you. Will I've got your back. Like whatever you need. It just was like, that's, it's what we needed and it's what they need. And it's, that's, I think that's the, one of the huge messages of this show is like women need to be supporting women. And I mean, we all need to be supporting women, but it's also, it, it's a battleground within its own, its own right that they need to support each other. And it was just so nice to see Alice who was, I think it's because she, she saw how, who are her friends were not treating her nicely. And then people who shouldn't even know treated her with respect and, and kindness. And I think that's when she turned her, her friend, um, oh my gosh, whose name I, is just now giving me? Pamela. Pamela. And was like, yo, I'm here for you. And it was, it really, it was a beautiful moment. And I, yeah, I got a little, I got a little teary. I loved nice. it. Nice. <laughs> uh, what about you, Ashvin? I mean, I think that is like true sisterhood right there. It's like, I'm glad that Alice was able to have a change of heart and actually be there for her friend, Pamela, and understand what it means to be a friend. You know, to be a real friend is not to judge another person. It's not to tell them how to be or how to do. Um, she, she saw her pain and she saw that it was real. And rather than saying, I'm going to lead you back to a place you're unhappy, she stepped up and said, I will be there for you in any way that you need. And I think, um, I think now they're going to be able to have a real friendship because it's actually authentic. And, you know, as we see Alice the whole time, I mean, she got, she got her butt kicked by everyone in her community, no matter where she went, somebody was telling her to fix her face. And mm. I think oh by the God. end, she just got so tired of it. So I'm glad that she treated Pamela with compassion and, um, and, you know, and, and you never know when it's going to be her turn. So I'm glad, I'm glad she's changing for the better. Yeah. Uh, and then to your point of fixing your face, that's literally the last thing that Phyllis, who was not really in this episode at all, but at the end, like it's the first thing she sees and that's what she leaves her with. Fix your face. Cause that's, what's more important here. Not what we're really here for, but fix your face because Phyllis is all about that presentation. So it was, uh, it was a perfect way to end it, I thought, because it just nailed that, put that nail in the coffin, I think, for yeah. Alice of this is what you're part of and are you sure you want to be a part of it? Um, awesome. Well, that's going to that's gonna do it for this episode. Oh, we just got talking. It just, the time just goes <laughs> I know, so right? Fast. The time flew. There's so much we didn't even get to talk about. <laughs> um, but please interact in the chat, like and subscribe. We, we love uh, hearing from you. Really quickly, let's do a, a real quick. Give me one prediction, Cody. Go. Um, I think we're gonna see a lot. For I, I'm hoping. I don't know who, who Alice is historically and how accurate that is. I'm hoping that in the next episode we see some crazy climax from her. All right, cool, Ashvin. I'm afraid of what Phyllis is gonna do, guys. She's organized twenty thousand uh, people oh now God, on these right. buses. I'm so afraid of what she's gonna do. That's it's not even a prediction. It's almost like what what is going to happen because because <laughs> she's a beast. <laughs> yeah, no, she is. It's you're right. She does have twenty thousand people, and she is raring to go. Uh, yeah, I don't and know how it's going to go because this is this is we got one more left, guys. How are they going to wrap this thing up? Because I don't think yeah. we're getting another season, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, anyway, where can we find you, Cody? Uh, I am on Twitter as Cody underscore Epp, and I am on Instagram as Cody Epp. Awesome. Ashvin. 
Yep. You can find me on Instagram at insights by ish. And you can find me at Sean star 75 on the gram and gorilla suit Sean on Twitter. Also on the council of dads after show Friday nights at seven. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you again so much for joining us and we will see you for the season finale mm -hmm. next week. Bye -bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.